Hello everybody and thank you for joining me today in this class on the subject of tips and tricks for the engineer. I'm privileged to spend my time around working with some great people uh, and on these travels I collate all my tips and tricks and even get some new ones from my friends and colleagues from around the world. My name is Ian Robinson, I'm the infrastructure consultant here at Grey Tech. I'm based in the UK but our international delegates will still be able to use all the principles in this class as there's no fundamental difference between the nations when it comes to projects. Grey Tech are the market leading multinational company that provide customers with all the tools, training and consultancy to design, simulate, fabricate and manage construction and manufacturing projects. We provide all the necessary tools and knowledge to ensure BIM compliance. This presentation is aimed at the Grey Tech design stage of BIM. It's a rapid fire, my top 10 10 tips of civil 3d and infoworks taking in some some of the other software uh, along the way now don't panic it's not a death by powerpoint we're just going to delve straight in and in at number 10 is our old favorite autocad now this is the basis of civil 3d and it packs a punch when it comes to a lot of uh, little known commands so here's an example, you've accidentally deleted something. Oops, what do you do? Do you undo it? What about all the work you've done since you did the delete and you didn't realize? You copy it into another drawing, you undo the pants off the drawing and then paste it all back in? No, just try oops and I'll show you that now. I'm sure we've all done it. Here we are, I'll pick a surface, maybe I'm gonna add a label in or something like that. So maybe a spot level, cause I wanna draw some stuff around here. Um, and I think, yep, yeah, that's what I want. And then I press escape and delete that point. Eagle-eyed ones amongst you might have noticed what's happened there. Uh, and then you start drawing stuff. Maybe I'll put in a leader or something like that. So, you know, uh, new gully, something like that and uh, do a bit of editing and maybe um, I then go and edit this network I might change some levels on it or whatever I'll just stick a, a simple gully in there for now uh, structures only pop a gully in etc maybe I draw something put some text in whatever okay so you've done a whole load of work and then you zoom out and you go where the hell has my surface gone so you're checking in you think <coughs> surface is gone so we'll have a quick look in here and you can see everything that i've done lots of stuff and all the way down there's the arrays so of course undoing it isn't really an option. Yes, I could copy all this stuff that I've drawn into a new drawing, but of course I've edited the network or I've edited something. So that could be a real issue. Well, just type oops. Old AutoCAD command, been there for donkey's years, undoes your last delete. Now we can just delete the correct element. In at the number nine spot, and I'm sticking with AutoCAD a little bit here, but when you use Civil 3D, you use tool palettes all the time with sub-assemblies, don't you? Uh, do you use it to store or load more other stuff on there? So, do you put your custom assemblies on there or your standard assemblies on there? What about blocks? Do you put all your, your blocks on your tool palette from your block library? Uh, Design Center can help massively there. What about commands? You can put commands and hatches on there. Uh, I asked one of our engineers who's been using AutoCAD since the 1980s, what's the most productive thing they've added over that time and his answer tool palettes and i'll tell you what while i'm in there i will we'll have a little talk about the cui as well so let's go and have a look so tool palettes is on that button there or you can go to the view tab and there's a tool palette button there or you can just type the word tool in anything from autocad lt upwards uh, in civil 3d here's our tool palettes and you can see we've got all our standard stuff in there and here's my my custom assemblies for example uh, we can put everything we want in there but you can add in your own palette and i'll call it uh, ian's 
brilliant stuff whatever you want to call it and you can just add loads of stuff in there add a little bit of text uh, commands maybe add some more text um, blocks etc and you can add separators and shift them around and stuff like that okay so let's just think about um, things that you would do repetitively so let's just create a couple of objects so I'll go in here I'll create a layer I'll call it boundary I'll make it green something like that uh, let's make it a bright green and we can add a line type in there maybe even load one that isn't in the standard drawing in the standard template let's pick border 2 and have that one in there okay uh, let's do another one and we'll call this easements and we'll maybe make that one red shouldn't have picked border when I uh, when I made it should I and we'll do that continuous okay uh, so what we'll do is I'll draw some stuff on the boundary layer so let's just draw using a rectangle this is an empty drawing as you can see and I'll start there and I'll do it 250 by 250 something like that okay so that's that and then maybe I'll put a hatch in there and we'll do what ANSI 32 say uh, let's put that on the easement layer let's scale it let's even put an angle on there if you want you know whatever we need and um, we'll plonk that in there see how that looks that looks okay right now what we can do is we can take these objects say the polyline I'll pick the polyline and we can drag it come on in you can do it drag it onto the let me turn the selection cycling off there drag it onto the tool palette so I'll go to the tool palette commands and it puts the polyline command on there but it does more than that because in the properties I'll give it a sensible name boundary and what we can do is rather than putting a fly out where you can choose to draw rectangles polylines etc or lines I'll just say no use the polyline command but look it keeps these properties the layer etc um, we could even adjust any of these properties in here as well so line type scale say 0.5 okay and okay let's do the same with the hatch we can pick the hatch it's all set up for our scale of our drawing and you can drop that in and we'll just rename that one uh, easement okay so now in that drawing we can just shut it down if we want I'll say I don't even need to save it do I so let's go in here and go back in here and let's say we're going to draw uh, a boundary with some easement in there let's go and draw that in this drawing so if we go to the layers you can see the layers don't exist and the line types not loaded or anything like that uh, but rather than going creating all that we can just go straight in here pick the boundary draw a boundary and you can see it's picking all them properties like so and if we look at the layer it's creating the layer and it's importing the line type it's doing everything we need it to do uh, and then for the hatch we'll just go easement and plot the easement in literally just click and drop and again adds all the properties in there and there we are there's our easement layer so anything that you're repetitively doing it'll save you loads of time right let's crack on uh, next on um, on the list um, is your country needs you in at number eight is country kits this is for both civil 3d infoworks and to some extent map 3d as well depending on which country you're in so I go out there a lot and I'm still seeing a lot of users that are not installing the country kit. They're just using the standard civil 3D that's installed and running with it. Um, it's not just the language that we're talking about. Um, even for UK users, for example, you can, you can install the British English instead of the English version, which would be the uh, American English. American English has things like stations. So if your software is saying stations instead of chainage, then you're using the American English version. So 
are you using your country kit and if you are do you engage with grey tech or autodesk and discuss what you want to see in it that's important as well so they're available in different places unfortunately infoworks you get it from your autodesk account civil from the knowledge base and map 3d for germany and switzerland water industry uh, from the knowledge base as well um, it can be added after you've installed the software as well in infoworks you can add the country kit content when you create a new model or you can add the content to any model you have already created including ones you've made uh, with model builder with civil 3d just make sure you start the version um, rather than starting civil 3d you start the civil 3d france or australia or uk ie uh, for uk and ireland etc so you just make sure you use that icon rather than the standard one now in infoworks you get a whole load of content and some of that content is really useful to everybody regardless of which territory you're you're working in uh, for example sweden have got some great city furniture uh, they've got some old people and some young people as well which are definitely missing from the uh, standard install for roads there's some great content all around the globe as well a little bit more specific um, for each country but you know there are things in there that you'll find useful for civil 3d if you're not using the country kit you don't get all your country specific assemblies and sub assemblies also the template is set up with all the layers line types civil objects and all their blocks all the civil object styles with their blocks uh, that you you know you would expect for each country and finally your country kit provides you with all your drainage requirements as well um, these kits are made possible by the input and feedback you give to Autodesk and their partners so please engage with us so we can make it better every single year right in at number seven is our first solo infoworks tip create styles from frequently used models whether that be revit autocad sketchup it really really doesn't matter when you create a style with your model next time you want to use it it's just a matter of importing all your styles into the new model and then you can use them so let's have a look at creating a revit model uh, using a revit model and creating a style uh, in Infoworks so you can use it time and time again I have a Revit model and I want to uh, place that Revit model into Infoworks so let's go and find my Infoworks here we are so this is where I'm working got a place to put this uh, uh, building so all I need to do is take the Revit model and drop it in here and what it will do here is it's going to do a conversion and it'll use the Navisworks engine to do that. So when we are finished, we should have in that same folder a Navisworks model as well as the Revit model. Here we go. Uh, first thing to note is that the coordinate system is set to international feet. That's standard Revit stuff. So if you know Revit, the database runs in feet and inches and it does an on the fly conversion for the European market. So you don't have to change that, just leave it as it is. And obviously Revit has its own coordinate system as well. So we don't want to worry about that. We'll just stick using the interactive placing, just stick it somewhere. It doesn't really matter where. Um, that will do. You could set an offset on there and stuff like that, but no, nope, that's fine. Just close and refresh. Because what we've done when we've imported this is it creates in the resources a folder so let's go into the resources so where you store your infoworks model so in my case it's on the h drive into infoworks 3 i've created a model and it's a, a cloud model so it's got that number code on it uh, and in the the model files so in there you can see in the model files if i go into resources 3d models it's one of these i don't know which one this one's keyside house i imported that in uh, the original webinar that i use this model for you can go on the internet and find that and huddersfield railway station i was showing somebody that and then so i suspect it's that one there there it is halifax so that's good so all i need to do now is copy this because we can create like a block library like you would a block library so if i just copy that 
and go and place that where I keep all my blocks and assemblies on the H drive in this case. So it could be anywhere on your server. And I will paste it in there. Give it a sensible name. Halifax. I'm getting so many of them now, I should start categorizing them, shouldn't I? So that's in there. Uh, I could copy that, couldn't I? It'd make life a bit easier. Copy. Okay. So what I can do now is I can go in and create a style from it. So if I go to my style palette and in there 3D models and buildings and in here this is where I'm going to store them all. So I'm going to go and create a new style. Okay. Now I don't want to go into the uh, model, I want to go into where I've just stored that in the blocks and assemblies rather than in the resources folder. So uh, I've already set it up, so I'll go in here, hit open. We now have a style of that building. Okay. Um, we can, if I make that a bit bigger, it'd be easier to see, won't it? There you go. So we have a style of that building. Uh, you can set translations in here as well. So um, I could say minus 0.5 uh, on the Z and rotations and all that sort of stuff in there. But no, I'm happy with that. Uh, we'll just stick with it as it is. Hit OK. Should appear at the bottom here. We'll call it Halifax. We now have a style of that building. I can delete that one as well. I don't even need that. So to use that building multiple times, all I need to do now is go into the Create tab and it should appear in here. I've already done a search for it. There it is. Um, search for This new interface, I've literally had it a matter of hours and I haven't managed to find where you can get rid of that transparency on there. Um, there's a possibility you can't. It's a bit annoying, to be honest. Um, so uh, you may find that. If you do, let me know. I'm sure I'll find it when I start looking at it. But there we are. I can just pick the Halifax as a model and drop it in now. And I can drop it in as many times as I want. Spin that around. There we are. All up and running and ready. But the key thing here is that you can save these styles. So that's what these buttons are. We can import and we can save. So if I do a save of these styles, I'll just stick it on the desktop for now. I'll overwrite the one that I did earlier. And if I go and open up a different model, so I've got a new project, it's going to be a housing scheme or whatever. Um, we can just import all our Revit styles, which we set up ages ago. And we can use them styles. Excellent. So let's go in here into 3D models into buildings that style isn't in there so I will hit import go and find it on the desktop hit open and that will import into here it'll take just a minute or two because there's quite a lot of buildings in there I've put quite a lot of stuff in there oh there it is so let's go in here and there's my Halifax so I could just you know swap it out whatever I need to do really oh, there it is okay so we can uh, create these very very quickly in all our other models now if uh, if you're around tomorrow I'm doing a class at 3 p.m. called use the data you didn't know they gave you and here you can see me using this technique or the result of using this technique where I just take the layouts of a 2D drawing, just the blocks in a 2D drawing, and I create that model on the right hand side. I just import them en masse and um, all the buildings just appear miraculously because before I do the class, I've set up all the Revit models uh, in my uh, style palette. So you can uh, uh, run rules then and say, if it's this type of building, put this model on. If it's this type of building, put that model on, that sort of thing. So that's really useful. Right, moving on. Number six. This is down from my number one spot last year. Um, those of you will have heard me barking on about point clouds a lot. Um, and to get more out of your point clouds, the top tip is to use Infoworks first. Because when you put the point cloud in Infoworks, 
you get a classified point cloud out the back end. Uh, so that will show you linear features. Uh, Inf Infoworks also does vertical features as well, but it also gives you a, a surface it's all ready for using in Civil 3D. It's perfect. So let's have a quick look at that. Okay, in recap, we've got a point cloud here of the A52. And you can see there's no RGB codes on it. Um, some intensity, which gives us some nice of the line works and things like that. But uh, there's no classification on there. Okay, there's nothing. Uh, it's a fairly basic thing. I'm going to put that into InfoWorks. Right, I'm not going to be able to show you all the process here. So again, speak to us afterwards if you want any, if you have any questions or um uh, organizers to come and see you um for any training or anything like that the reason why i can't show you the whole process is because it you know it's a big point cloud the a52 it's you know nearly a terabyte big it will take you know 15 20 minutes to process so uh, i've had to do the here's one i did earlier basically this is just model builder um uh, of the area and what I've done is I've processed the point cloud. I've just dropped it in and I'll show you where I hit the, where I hit the process button. Once you've got your point cloud in, you just dragged and dropped it in. All you do is point cloud terrain and it's going to process that point cloud for you and give you linear features, vertical features and a surface and also a classified point cloud. So here you can choose your ground for less detail, more detail, or you can customize uh, the detail, say what uh, resolution do you want, ground detail every one meter, and for the terrain, what uh, raster resolution do you want? So the bigger the number, uh, the higher the resolution. Um, you can also fill in any holes uh, and you can process, uh, so it'll process multiple processing and you can choose the smaller the window that you process, the more detail you're going to get. Um, linear features as well, you can say give me a load of linear features. Again, if you were to go custom, you could say the resolution of the uh, linear feature, uh, what your maximum minimum curb heights are. And same with vertical features, you can go in and say what um, minimum points per object. 100 is actually quite low um, uh, I would probably go a bit higher on that and then feature size you can say look ignore everything below that sort of uh, level if you think of maybe 0.3 uh, somewhere around there okay and um, you can override the um, the model with the point cloud so it'll give us the uh, levels um, and we can generate data for all points, lightweight or key points. I'll leave it lightweight. And we can export it as well. Uh, so I'll export the, the ground and linear points. Okay, just tell it where you want to go and then you start processing. Uh, I'll do a here's, here's one I've shown you earlier. Okay, here it is. Here's the one after processing. Um, and what we can do with it here is we have you know, look at the point cloud options. We've got things like point cloud themes where we can uh, add classification. You can see it's picked out the structures, the ground points. It's picked out vertical uh, objects as well. Um, or we can do elevation, stuff like that. Uh, usual stuff. Here's the really clever thing. Look, it's picked out these uh, lamp posts and signs and things like that. Uh, let's just put it on the classification, uh, etc. So it's picked out all the uh, uh, lamp posts and things like that, and it has put in uh, the vertical uh, uh, features. So now we can do vertical uh, feature extraction, and we can go around picking items and placing vertical features in them here we are so you can see it's converted everything it gets things wrong um uh, it's quite early days on this so um it's thought that that's a tree if i uh, select that it doesn't have tree as an option in here 
um, uh, what we need to do is add tree uh, the telegraph thingy but we can just change that manually can't we so if I just go into more styles um, and go out of vegetation and go in to energy and then I can swap it out for something that's a bit more uh, suitable um, no, just a distribution pylon uh, obviously that's a rather large one my goodness me but we can see we can fit it in there um, and you can just flick around swapping them all out note that the all the lamp posts it's picked them out uh, it's picked some vegetation out these little squares are where it doesn't know what it is um, if you zoom in to them you can usually get an idea there's literally nothing there but basically you're getting all the vertical features the other thing you can do in here is you can extract uh, uh, horizontal features as well so these are uh, linear feature extraction now we could do with seeing the linear features in here a little bit better so if I turn the classification on maybe I have to be out of that command there we go this black thing here that can get in your way um, what that is if I go in to my uh, model browser it puts an overlay on your um, uh, on your model okay that's new it's not put the overlay on but just moving things around seems to have got rid of that black thing uh, in the earlier versions you used to get this overlay that would appear in here that you can turn off uh, as I said this is a new version of uh, Infoworks and you don't uh, but of course uh, what we need to do is get the surface in there and the surface will be uncategorized at this point here it is so if I just drag that into ground surface and turn that on it will actually put the uh, the surface in for us which will be a bit easier to see there we are and now we can see the categories a little bit better so to do linear extraction it's very straightforward you pick a point on your model so I'll pick that point there and we'll just draw down that road a little bit and double click it and what it'll do is it will extract a line put a basically a, a 3d geometry down there okay so that's your linear object there um, you can do it in the cross-section view and it allows you to see where you're at okay so that's top of the curve okay and there's a barrier up there etc and we can go up and down the line just making sure that that is at the top of the curve you can see the the blue dot in there uh, and if you need to move it you can let me see if there is one that's a little bit off that one looks a little bit high so we can zoom in and we can just move it to the point where we want it so you can do a little bit of editing in there as well um, and you can see that the point cloud has been coloured up with all the uh, the features so we've now got a classified point cloud once you've done all that we can export point cloud and we can do grid points or not uh, we can do linear features transverse vertices uh, vertical features this will give us a csv file every say 10 meters uh, with all the points in it a csv file with uh, an x y and a z in it tell it your target um, coordinate system and save it in a particular folder and then click start export once again i'll have to do here's one i did earlier so just bear with me while i get that model okay we've got that there's a few things we can look at so if i just pull it over so this is the export so the linear features are a shape file and the vertical features are a shape file um the you get a grid uh, in rcs format and if you look at the resources folder you also get a full uh, rcs of the a52 as well okay so let's have a look at them 
So this is it in Civil 3D and you can see it's nicely classified up and it's much simpler. There's a lot less points in there. Um, we've got all the points to generate the curbs and stuff like that, uh, which is nice and easy. We can import the shape file as well. If we did uh, map import. And we'll go and find that file. Oh, wrong one. So there's my linear features. And we have our points in there. We'll just bring any data in that comes in with it. I don't think there is any. And that's brought that in as a 3D polyline. So we've got a 3D polyline with all the vertices uh, in there. And we can create a surface from our point cloud. Um, the surfaces are still very detailed. Um, but let's have a quick look at it. That's not the one I wanted. Just bear with me. In the uh, 2020 country kit, there's a, a slight mistake on the border. Uh, we want to see in model view the triangles, not the border. That'll be a bit better, wouldn't it? Let's have a look. And there we are. So there's our, our surface as well in here so you get a classified point cloud and you get a surface as well or you can create a surface a lot easier because it's taken out all the vertical points all the vertical features are all gone so it's much much better right following on from the point cloud theme is point groups you can use point groups for styling searching and even finding issues Civil 3D point groups are really good. If you import a file and you want to find all the points that land at the default level, i.e. you don't have any elevation data, you can use a point group. If you want to create a surface of just one area, you can use a point group. And if you want to hide all the points, you can use a point group. Let's have a very quick look at that one. Now in Civil 3D, you can see in my template, I've got this errors one. It's very straightforward is the errors one. It's using an error marker. I've just created a point style and a label style. And I've said, just include anything where the levels match zero. So if I go and import the points, that one there, uh, that one, that format so the point number northing easting elevation and description and we'll hit OK won't take long to import there they are and I want to find all the errors I can just update that and they've turned red perfect there's a hundred and one uses for point groups that's just merely one of them um, so speak to your uh, account manager um, or your technical representative and they'll help you understand uh, lots of other top tips on using point groups. Next on the list, in at number four, it's got to be data. Use the geospatial tools in Civil 3D for all your constraint data. Stop looking at the Environment Agency website and just view their data live in your project. This applies to InfoWorks users, Civil 3D users, and even AutoCAD users, because if you're an AutoCAD user since 2018, you can download AutoCAD Map 3D instead of the vanilla AutoCAD, and it will cost you exactly zilch, nothing. No pounds, no euros, no dollars to have AutoCAD with all the geospatial tools. Uh, we'll just have a very quick look at that as well. So back into our drawing, let's just find where we are in the world. So I'll just turn the aerial map on, there we are. So we're going to work in this area here. And the question is, does it flood? You know, you want to look at your constraint data. How many of you have been to the Environment Agency website and had a look at the flood mapping uh, plans? You've got flood zone three and all that sort of stuff. And you can go and have a look at um, the one in a thousand year flood or one in 100 year flood, etc. Don't bother, no need. I've seen so many people get this and then just do a little snip 
take the image, put it in the document, connect directly to the Environment Agency website using the geospatial tools in Civil 3D, Map 3D, and view that data live. So this is the latest up-to-date information. Now, for those of you that have never used any geospatial tools, tomorrow at two o'clock, I am doing a presentation called the Jizbin Conundrum. And it's all about, from the, for, for complete beginners, how to get this geospatial data, what does it do, how to get it, where to get it from, and how to use that in Civil 3D. So that's two o'clock tomorrow. So that's your um, data. Let's move on to uh, number three in the chart. And this year's number three is naming conventions. Name your stuff, name things. Why not automate naming as well? So you can get your Civil 3D to do automatic names and automatic um, uh, layer creation, and you can get it to uh, uh, force users to put names for all their uh, assemblies, etc. So let's have a quick look at that. So back in Civil 3D, we'll just put a little surface in here and we'll draw a feature line and then we'll, we'll have the names automated. So let's go and do the names first. Go into your settings and go to edit drawing settings on the object layers. A lot of you will have seen this and let's start with a surface or so triangulation surface. If you've got the American English, it'll say tin surface. Um, so it's going to put it on that layer, CZZ40M surfaces. We can add a prefix to that or a suffix. So I'll put a suffix, it'll be, it'll put it after the word surfaces. And then whatever you write in there, that value is what will, it will create the layer with that addition to it. So if I put say a delimiter, like an underscore, so it'll say CZZ40M underscore surfaces underscore whatever I write. And if I make that whatever I write a star, it will use the name of the surface. So that's useful. Um, if you were to do something like feature lines and do the same thing, suffix underscore star, it will use the name of the site. So that'd be quite good, wouldn't it? So let's do that. Let's create um, a surface and let's create a feature line. Uh, I'll do the feet. I'll draw the feature line first because it'll be easier to see. So if I do a polyline to start with, and start it using point numbers, PN. And uh, if I'm start, I'll start down here. So that's two o one one eight, two o one one eight, all the way to two o one four o. And then I'll stop it there and restart it on two o one six four dash and that last one there is 201692 20169 is that right 20169 yeah that'll do uh, get out of there and close it that's that so we've got our, our polyline which will convert to a, a feature line so let's go and create a feature line from object pick our object we'll create a new site Okay, and I'll just call this site area one. Uh, feature line, I would always, always recommend naming things. Um, so give it a good name. It makes targeting and stuff so much easier. I mean, obviously you'll know sometimes when it's not important. Uh, but you can use these uh, styles here. Um, obviously that should start at one. Um, and you can add in, say, the style name, so it'll be feature line, and then you can get it to add in automatically this style name. Now, if your template is set up to do that, that'd be a lot easier, wouldn't it? So it'll be called, uh, by default, feature line, then a next counter, and then I can go in and add in the style name, like so. So if I put a space between them. So it'll be feature line one, style name. Okay, um, and then I can just get rid of the, that, and call this area one and the style it'll use this name here so if i was to say that this was um i'll just put an edge of carriageway it's edge of a footpath isn't it but anyway uh we don't need to sign anything and we'll hit okay so now if we have a look at this and look at the layer that it's on it's on a layer called feature lines area one it's creating these layers 
dynamically for me. So if I go feature line, you should have one called feature lines area one, and there it is, created dynamically. Let's do the surface, same thing for the surface. So if I go and create myself a surface, you can see the name has got that star on it. So whatever I call it there, area one, not fussed about the style. Uh, as soon as I click out of that, you'll see that it adds that in. Hit OK. And just to complete this, because we're all very anal, aren't we, when it comes to these things, if we don't do it properly, add area one, hit OK. And it triangulates. Of course, we've got that error, haven't we? So we should see a big spike in there. There it is. Get that off realistic. There's that big spike. And uh, here's a, a bonus top tip. Don't bother trying to delete it. Just go into the definition and on the build, exclude levels less than, say yes. And just pick a reasonable figure. This is around 60, so I just say exclude everything below 10. Rebuild. That point has disappeared out of the surface. Bonus top tip. Number two in the chart, just been picked as a post, um, is uh, also naming, but name your sub-assemblies. You can force users to automatically name all their sub-assemblies. Let's have a look. So in Civil 3D, I've got an assembly marker ready, a baseline ready. Let's just have a look at the settings, find sub-assemblies and the commands create sub-assemblies and if you go to the options you can force people to always put the sub-assembly name on and that makes things like targeting so much easier so for example if I was going to uh, place on a lane select my marker it's going to force me to use the name it will default to the standard name if I wanted to ignore that but if I was going to go and put a lay-by on there, it allows me to call it, oh my goodness me, left lay-by, to force placing these uh, this name on there so that when I'm going to target, I know I'll be targeting the left lay-by and not the lane. Because otherwise it'll just say carriage around the left, another carriage around the left, uh, and uh, you won't know which is which. Okay, we're up to the final one now, so let me get that one out. And here it is, number one. D refs and X refs. Make your drawing smaller. You can use both, so why don't you? Makes far more sense. If you've got a big, nasty drawing and you've got everything in it, start referencing them out. Um, but don't deref everything. That's a common mistake people make. Just deref what you need and xref what you need. Let me show you. Here we are. So Civil 3D. This is by far my favourite, um, and it actually came from uh, Lucas over in the uh, Czech Republic. And uh, what we have here is we've got. Our drawing which is here the, the finished project it's got the corridor in there it's got a whole heap of surfaces in there uh, it's got all the alignments got everything in there and what we've done is we've created a data shortcut for that drawing and all I've done is I've shortcutted in the alignments nothing else just alignments then you can xref everything else in if I just reload it So we're referencing the original drawing and if the original drawing changes this drawing changes so this drawing all it holds is the deref of the alignments the xref of the drawing and i've placed in it all my cross section views everything's linked back and if we look at the file size for this drawing 2.2 meg tiny the original file without all the cross section views in 13 meg so it makes it really really quick and easy to work with 
with multiple cross-section viewings and on large projects I think that's really vital so that's that's our number one this year and thank you for that Lucas I thought it was a superb top tip it's certainly uh, top of my list now anyway so thanks very much and we will move on to questions now So anybody has any questions, now's the time. I think we're okay. We should have, um, you know, 10 minutes or so if needed. Uh, if not, you can write them down and just give us the, we'll, we'll answer them afterwards as well. Thanks very much for your time.